common ground. Yeah. 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 When he says that, you know, just throw it out, that's wishful thinking. Exactly. Honestly, you can't do so, it. The numbers uh, and the deadlines. Yes. Mm. But there have been some great yes. examples. And in Indian education, when you look at Shantini he brought in so many things and let the kids develop unhindered. In your college, I remember there was somebody who had a black uh, automobiles. So somebody who was James Motorcycle, was dismantled. And this individual had the knack. So your teachers have the knack. Allow them to bring it to the stand that make yes. them a resource. Yes. Don't you don't have to do, do either or. Yeah. Do both, but just allow your teachers to bring their passions. You know, the curriculum can stay in the science classroom. We don't have to bring it into the no. STEM. Exactly. 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 How, how many of you have a separate STEM period? I just want to tell you one thing that this is no STEM or anything. This is a candidate. Yeah. Ten years ago. Ten years ago, we had a kid who was very bad. pulling their hair, and I didn't like the way they were treating the kid, and uh, it was I don't believe in all that. In those days, the cricket matches were going on. So math and physics, I took him on the playing field, told one of the uh, names director, walk with him with cricket, physics, and math while on a cricket pitch. And you don't know how much he enjoyed it that he started enjoying that. So this is the way I was. I, we actually had this, I'm telling you, not just to, you know, because you said it, there was this boy, very interested in cricket, very bad at uh, science, and uh, I didn't know how to bring him to class. So I, I told him, I said, you're going to swing the ball. Do you know how you do it? I just rub it and shine it on one side. I keep the other one rough and I swing it. I said, you know Bernoulli's theorem, that I don't know. I said, do you know that this is the same principle which lifts an aircraft and the boy was hooked. Oh. So when you said, you know, it's a lift because one side there's a drag, one side there's a, you know, it's going and it swings. And the Pakis, of course, can do things differently, so they're very well swing. Yeah. <laughs> but then, uh, this is how you pick out, that, that's what I'm saying, build from the existing resource. Don't yes. try to bring in a STEM lab and supplant it and have a curriculum and tell everybody to follow that. So, so it's a wonderful thing with science and art. Great thing science and art. Yeah. And the discipline you Wonderful work and they understood science and understood art. But art is one media that you can work with other subjects. So I think there are some questions around how to implement this. And I, I disagree that you can't go to a 2000 student school and do the same thing. So a few fundamental things of course you need to do. One is we don't have teachers who lead this. We have teachers who participate in this along with the students. So just like for the board challenge, there's all these student teams, there's a teacher team also and that's the benchmark. The kids have to defeat the teachers. And if they do, those teachers have to exempt homework for a month. <laughs> so you know, there's real, there's real prize but in, in defeating the teachers. that homework must be exempted all the time. <laughs> no, I, I, Second schools in Finland have abolished homework. Look, for me, a lot of it comes down to trust. Trust in the teacher and trust in the learner. We interfere too much, we prescribe too much, we hold them to standards, we don't give our faith to them. You, you were saying about many fantastic things, and you don't need to spend a whole load of money. And you know, one of the greatest things is like cross disciplinary learning. And for example, Nobody thinks music and mathematics can work together. Oh. It's fractions. Yes. It's fractions. Exactly. Music is fractions. Exactly. It's all fractions. The guy who won the gold medal in the shot put, I think it was the other day, is a physicist and he worked yeah. out how to do his perfect yes. movement, like you were talking about with the cricket. There are real world simple examples. And I know I said earlier there's wrong ways. I I didn't want that to be misinterpreted, but what I was trying to get is people think you can just throw money at this or you make a slot in the schedule oh, for it or something. And that's where I'm talking about going around. Yes, you can invest money very wisely and there are great things you can invest in, but people just think, okay, I'm gonna buy this machine, I'm gonna do this thing, I'm gonna set up this space, I'm gonna put this schedule in, without investing in the real resources, which are the staff and the learners. But how do you do it? I mean, let's, let's stay on that, because you know, that, that is the, if you think that is the crux. For me it is, yeah. but, yes, but, but how, do you, how do you make it happen? Because it's, uh, it's changing mindsets, it's setting up culture, yeah, maybe I can pitch it. Yes, please. <laughs> uh, 
maybe I can pitch in. So I'll give an example of, because I know of what we've done. Uh, we started this space uh, in, in 2013 out of a 100 square foot garage. Somebody <coughs> used a free garage in Bandra to kind of set that space up. So it was a, a bathroom kitchen of a hotel that somebody gave for free. In Bombay to get a free space, it's unheard of, right? The next place that we moved on to was uh, inside a design school, and they had a kitchen area that was not, uh, you know, constructed. So they said, "Why don't you guys be part of that space? We'll give it to you for free in Lower Bandra, in in Bombay." Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so you got another free space. That's so, yeah. so I mean, <laughs> we don't know the right people, but I think we got them excited, right? They wanted right. us to be. <laughs> and then the third time that we went, you know, things like this happened. So eventually, we had a 10,000 square foot space in. Bombay, there was a maker space running independently and all of that, right? So, uh, so I think one piece that we all need to remember is that the physical space does not matter at all. It matters who are the people inside that yes. space. And I think that we've learned really well over the last 10 years because I think uh, in your case, being educators, I feel that the spark that you're going to generate in a student needs to be coming from a level of trust, like you said, right? Where you're where you believe that the person who's actually giving you that uh, encouragement or direction is somebody that you can trust completely. Now, I'm just coming back to Makers Asylum as an example. We also work with a lot of teenagers now. Uh, over the last five years, we've been working through our programs with a lot of young talents and teenagers. And I think the one thing that they come to the program and say to us is that we feel free that we can do whatever we want to do. And that, I think, is the mindset that they come to us with. And when they go to the school, they do have the same labs, but they don't feel the freedom. So when you enter Maker's Asylum as well, the idea was to keep the tools all open so that you can break it, you can open it, you can touch it. In most labs, what happens in schools, which we've seen, is that it's in closed boxes. You have to yes. take permission. Yes. You know, somebody has to open it for you. That itself is a barrier. Maker's space. Huh? Maker's space is mine but yes. all open it could come in any time and there's yeah, yeah which is great which is supposed to be like that but i'm saying in most places yeah. right and that's the barrier right the, the we've got to like open the barriers out for somebody to come and access it so once you enter you know that if, even if i break it i know i can fix it so let me just open it up right those kind of things and i think one of the other pieces that everybody talks about when they are in that kind of a community where people are more passionate about making they feel that the conversation is flowing with somebody who understands that they're going through that process and journey of making because you're constantly iterating over a problem statement. You're not coming from a high ground that I know more and you know less. It's right. about that collaborative problem solving. Okay. So you're coming and converging at a middle point with that person. And I think that is really empowering for a lot of young people because that's when they felt feel that you know you are coming to their level and really <coughs> trying to problem solve together as a collaborative person and not as somebody who presumes that you, because you have certain degrees, that you can actually give them value, right? So the so space doesn't matter, so it's zero. With the younger crowd, mentioned that, what I noticed is that they are purposeful in their activities. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, they're not interested in the theory of it too much. Yeah. They want to try it out and see if it works, if they can create a product or something that, you know, moves along. Otherwise, they, they check it. So when you talk about uh, you know, just lab lab and also related to 21st century skills and then now what we're talking about entrepreneurship, uh, you have to realize that they are using whatever is available to them to build a product which they want to launch. And I think that is where this uh, state thing is going to really help them out because they do not accept barriers. So let I want to add one thing, I want to come back to yeah. you know, the faith and trust piece because yeah. I want to, as a head of school, I want to understand as heads of schools, as school leaders, what, is it, what are you doing to, yeah. to communicate that, that faith and trust? I actually want to add one more question actually to what the, you know, this discussion as well because I want to ask everyone because all of you are administrators of the school as well, right? And the teachers obviously are following a certain guideline that comes top down. Now, if an administrator is, of course, a, extremely open, but like in a question like 2000 kids, what kind of uh, agency does this educator have is the big question. Because in an open environment, like say an open maker space, that agency is with everybody. 
I can say that do whatever you want and I don't have a problem with it or that agency or that culture is set. So I'm just wondering like how is that so set as well? That's exactly what I wanted to bring in that more than the space or you know that period in the slot. What's important is having one person driving this who understands this, who's enthusiastic about it and who has agency to do as they wish. So if you have a principle like that or you, uh, you can't just assign the physics teacher to do this or the computer science teacher to do this. In, in my school, it was me because I come from that background and I was passionate about it. And yet, we still hired somebody who was an out and out, you know, uh, person who could tinker with students and guide them and nurture them. So, we bring that person in every week because I can't be there in every class. So, as principals, first you have to accept how high in your priority is cultivating this STEM mindset. If it's not, then you know, you're always going to be relying on outsiders to do this and we've learned that we've burnt our hands and it's never going to come from outside. And it w uh, I, I just wanted to add to that point that culture building has to be inside yeah. your spaces and it can't be, anybody, nobody else can bring that culture to you, yeah. right? So yeah, our teacher's involvement is to the extent yeah. of participation. I have a question for you. Since you, you certainly seem very passionate about art in this STEM. Yes. What is it that you've done which has really worked well for you? Oh. Or maybe worked more successfully than the other things? To bring in the arts, uh, so he's given us a great example, she's talked about it. What is it that you've done, because hers is an open maker space, it's not a closer. What is it that you've done in a school scenario? I'm very curious to know that. So, um, we have many different activities uh, at JBCN, right around the world. And we, we allow the learners to take responsibility for the direction of this and we really empower student council. So they give us good feedback about what people are thinking. Because let's be honest, we're out of touch. I think a lot of us are out of touch. The learners are far more in depth with this. Um, and I don't want to go too much into what I'm talking about this afternoon, but we give them opportunities to fail as well as succeed and we trust and I keep on coming back to this key word about trust. We have events such as Artopia Inspire us where they do a lot of performance, we have sports events, whatever it may be, it doesn't just have to be STEM or STEAM. It goes far beyond that but what I try to instill in my teachers is this. You are the captain of your ship. You have a start point and you have an end point. I'm not going to tell you how to navigate to get to that point, but you know by the end of the two years, three years, whatever it is, that's where you need to be. Now as long as you're showing me along the way that you're covering key concepts, no matter how you're covering this, and give them the faith to do this, I think it helps you. Now in giving specific examples with regards to incorporating art, I think it's about promoting working with other sections and other departments that are more creative than you might necessarily be. And this is where you talked about having the right people. Don't just ask the physics teacher to do this. My, my music teacher actually has a real good mathematics background, which is why I mentioned a bit about fractions, because he came to the mathematics teacher and said, we're basically teaching the same thing to our primary learners. You realize this, don't you? And, and of course, the mathematician didn't actually know this. But he said, let's plan together, let's work together, and let's make this something really special and memorable for our learners. And it's the staff having the confidence and faith and knowing that you're not going to come down on them because they're working together, they're, they're deviating from what is expected to happen, and that the parents have the trust and they're not going to complain, why aren't you teaching this chapter from the textbook? Why didn't you cover this part of it? Why are you working across this plenary? You have to educate your parent body as well to, to be on this journey with you, which is what, what you mentioned earlier. And that's a very difficult thing to do in India because one of the thing, reasons why we do IGCSE and not MYP, even though we do PYP and DP, is our parents want academic results. They want to know where their learners are. They won't accept this. Oh, MYP doesn't do anything to evaluate the learners? No, we don't want that. No, they do it now. Oh, yeah, they, they, well, they, they've finally done it because everybody's been telling them for 20 years to do it. But, but again, it comes down to faith and trust and inspiring. But I have to be honest with you. It's like anything. I can have really, really talented, brilliant teachers. But if they're closed-minded and they're not willing to go on the journey with me, I would rather have a less able teacher but someone who is more open-minded to help me with that journey 
because they're going to put that vision into the actual school. And don't ever be afraid <coughs> of changing your staff around, is what I will say. And that's something important I've learned because either they want to go on the journey with you or they don't want to go on the journey with you. And it's not that I force people out, but I need like-minded people to help me to enable this, otherwise it's never going to go across the school. So this is how we are used to work. I mean, we love schools who want to see the daily calendar, how they are yeah. doing about everything. I would say, this is where the end result is. You can teach them any way you want. You can bring the playground into the classroom. You know? And this is the way I <coughs> And it was wonderful. Kids did well. They enjoyed the school. You know, and everything was very student So. Because the teachers would get nervous, and then I think all the teachers would be there for my longer time, and they didn't like this way because I said, no, no. Whatever we taught, they should start, they should know the end result. And the way they want to teach, as long as the kids are happy, all you can do is make a parent. But once the parents also seem to understand, but on the high side, they thought we were much smaller school. What about these great students who have thousands and thousands of kids and we get to first of all educate the parents to be I'll take it to the school. 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 I'll take it to drops down from the parental perspective as well that you know how my child is going to be or where my child is going to be so so in this journey how have you been i mean it's it's really difficult it's for getting the most difficult lot and i think <laughs> that is where so is that's a nice segue so into the second part of trust exactly between so the stakeholders uh, ma'am also yeah. comes but, from but, the but, perspective but, which if you could if you could hold on that yes. that just one more to have yeah, a thought yeah, you yeah, may yeah, ask yeah. and then, and then I think yeah. I, I do want to go back into a little bit of a theme that I'm sure, seeing sure. in the conversation and then we can get into the parents. Yeah. Yes. So I just wanted to add to the point you mentioned. Uh, there is this person called Manjul Parker. So he is a fields medalist. That's the yeah. Nobel Prize yeah. in yeah. Mathematics. Yeah. And he's an accomplished tabla player. Yeah. Yeah. And he has actually used music in uh, discovering whatever he has discovered in mathematics. I wanted to add to what uh, ma'am you were saying, including the discussion that we have. So uh, when working with teachers, we uh, we are talking about theory, right? So I am also an engineer. We have teachers in schools who have got all these degrees, B. Ed., M. S. C. and everything. But we do not have. We come from a culture where we have not used our hands. And our parents also. We have all been a product of the same system, where we have uh, only talked about theories, exams, but we have ourselves never done it. So how do you bring in all these stakeholders? Because it's the mindset. The mindset shift can only happen when we ourselves get that wow factor. Wow, this is how it's supposed to be done. So that that goes for parents. That goes for the teachers. So how do we do this? Yeah, and that was going to be my theme as well. Because one of the things that thank you for that segue. One of the things that I you know in my conversations with you so far and what you also sharing. It's not about the space. You know. Yeah. Getting out of the way of the child. It's not about the space, about uh, uh, furthering the natural curiosity. It's about mindsets. A common theme is you all role model. You know, when I was talking to you, you were in the field. You know, you were role modeling. You know, real hands-on activity. You, know, you role model. You role model, right? And then there is about changing mindset. You really get teachers on site. I mean, first and foremost, your teachers on site before we even get parents on site. How do you do that? How do you get teachers on site? How do you change their mindsets? If I can get started, so. Participation, of course, works. So they are not responsible or accountable for the outcome in this space. So uh, there is nobody telling them off. He asked me, "Is he got lesson pura nahi kiya?" There is no report format to be filled out after each ten session. So when teachers realize that it is genuinely an open learning environment and it's not stipulated that I must do this or I must showcase this by the end of the month, then I think that trust comes across and. The the senior leadership has to take this seriously. It is when we direct them, we ask for a lot of uh, you know feedback, reporting, parents को क्या समझाना है, ये क्या करना है, and we put that pressure back uh, onto the teacher. That is when that trust bridge breaks. We need to look out for our teachers. So anytime, let's say parents do question this, 
So you have to be there and not the teacher answering for why you have structured the program in that manner. And no, sorry to interrupt you, but every time you may not be present exactly. too. Yeah, you have to. That's the job. Be. But is there a difference That's between a small school, a smaller school growing up and growing and a larger school and also parents? Because it has to be in the diff- culture. But it has to be in the yeah, culture. So, and it, I so it, it should not make a difference that whether the top management speaks or whether the teacher speaks. I think but everybody it's, it's should. It's about establishing in the beginning. The teachers will not have that faith and trust when you start. So you got to take charge, and then you know slowly the culture will come through, and then everybody is speaking the same language. So partly, I do agree that. When you are initiating that program, yeah. as the, the the captain of that ship, you stand in front. But at the end of the day, it's the teacher who's delivering it. And yeah. trust yeah. with the parent will come when the teacher comes. Only yeah. when the teacher comes. Yeah. Only yeah. when the teacher comes. Otherwise, stumbling. you'll be hounded. I've done yeah. I've done IB uh, in three schools. Started from the scratch. They were brand new schools. Started with Pathways, 2003, Genesis Global School, 2011. Then moved to Gems. And believe me when I say that. Every time when I spoke in front of the parents, the first six months were very difficult. I made sure my teachers started speaking that language yes. before I did. Yes. The moment the teacher started speaking exactly. that language and doing parent sessions and talking to them and inviting them, the parents just settled exactly. and they were so happy. How did you? Like, what did you do to? I trained. I trained my yeah, teachers. I did a lot of training. I did a lot of Because see, for me and a school, I'm one person. But for the parents, it's their child's class teacher. Yes, Does absolutely. my child's absolutely. class teacher know this when she's delivering yes. something? Does this one know? So it's important <coughs> that you take on the lead in the beginning, but don't stay there. Yeah, of course, it has Train to, your teachers and then let them take across. on within yes. months to take that. Yes. That's where I differ a little, that no. it helps more. It will no, make I, your I, life I, easier. I agree with that. I agree with that entirely. But yeah. uh, now, but I, I do want to call out one thing you said, is that is the teachers who are delivering this program. And I go back to this again, again. The teachers are not required to deliver this program. This, anything, pro- this different. program will I'm move. Anything, this program will move, on, yes. and the teachers are participants. They are not the directors of the program. They may s- step up and be the facilitators for students if they stuck somewhere, but more than that, they are still participants. So, and when it comes to parents, uh, I mean, of course, there is this pressure: "Ki kyo ho raha hai? How is going to help my child score better in board exams and whatnot?" We need to defend that, but at the same time. If the parents are not paying anything extra for this program, everybody likes a, a free additional gift. You know, if you're just doing this out of your own school resources and budget, and you're not asking, you're not asking the parents to pay another five thousand because the, this program is starting off. Why do we need to convince the parents so much? And I think when that general curiosity of the child, that tinkering nature of the child, will get translated at home, they will start observing. So sometimes when parents do ask us, I say. Have you observed your child? Ha, ask your question. Which character? That is the outcome of the program. Right? Yeah. Hold, hold on to that. There are two questions. That, that gentleman there at the back wanted to say something. I wish you would resist. So I, I don't know why they are taking it and make, putting it in a compartment. When we talk about STEM, STEAM is majorly integrated thing. So again, compa- making it and uh, fixing it in a one compartment. It's an integrated thing. It has to be go along with the curriculum. And it will happen. Ma'am, you have left your mobile. No, no, I'm, I'm staying, okay. coming oh, back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> holding the, holding yeah. the <laughs> thing. She fooled us. <laughs> See, I think why it's important to not, we're not in essence compartmentalizing STEM, but that's how we present it because the first conversation we had around the syllabus being, being there, right, and sort of directing the whole school operation. So we want to keep this away and protect it from the syllabus pressure. From the curricular pressure, that's why we talk about it separately from everything else. No other reason. Of course, the science and the math and the music, everything comes into the STEM space. So the way they're doing this from a model, it's a different model. Yeah. The model, as I understand it, is you've created a separate space. But when yeah. there's a question and there's a challenge there, they work yeah. back and integrate it into, into the goes class. to all the. But different he mentioned like his uh, curriculum runs differently yeah. as like something. No, it may, it may be in some other place, but they're, they're what they're doing. What they're doing, just to understand the model, is they're for, like they're challenging the child based on, like for example, uh, a natural point that children want to grow themselves. They're creating a challenge, letting the in the space, in this time and space that they have called for STEM, they further the challenge. But the teachers of the main curriculum, yeah. they could pick up some concepts here and they start adapting whatever they are doing to teach that particular. They have to build those bridges to this and build a bridge. Now, yeah. it's a model. 
right? And like there are no right or wrong answers. It's okay. a different model. See, see, right? one, one thing which I want to conclude is creating more awareness and having a professional development is the only solution about this whole discussion. Okay, we'll get to what kind of professional development. Hold that thought. And I, I think the gentleman behind you wanted to say something. Yeah, so, uh, what I'll share is the heritage journey. So, Yusuf, uh, can you introduce us? So, okay, my name is Nitin Bhatia. Okay. Uh, I'm actually an investment banker. I'm not an educator. Okay. Uh, but I work with uh, several K-12 schools. Okay. Um, as part of you know uh, that journey, I also ended up working with heritage schools. And given the topic, I wanted to share my learning from there because I've seen a lot of these schools you know, over the years. So, if you look at sort of when heritage started in Gurgaon, uh, they had a very different notion on what kind of education they want to provide, right? So, so, so I, I mean, uh, you know, they had a different philosophy of what they want to teach and how they want to teach, etc. And so, for a very long period of time, they, in some way, attracted the like-minded parent community. So, so in all of this, you know, if you are going to, let's say, if I can use the term, deviate. Uh, from let's say the, the well trodden path, mm -hmm. it may be important for you to consider what kind of parent community you want to attract. Right? Because if the parent yeah. community is on board with what you are trying to do, they, they sort of resonate <coughs> with your philosophy, that initial journey becomes easier for you. Okay. At the same time, I can also tell you that when they became big, when they really became like of sufficient scale, for example, you were talking about you know teachers you know borrowing and creating these bridges. It is possible to do this at a certain scale. It it becomes impossible to do it at a different scale because this borrowing and creating that bridge requires skill. And sort of you know some teachers you know will have that skill. Unfortunately, at scale, you know expecting every teacher in every sort of you know stream. Uh, in, in every school to be able to do it, you know, is, is just a far harder reach, you know, it, it, you know, so, so basically the, the scale will prevent you from doing it very well. And at that point in time, you know, you also have to take a call on what kind of parent community you will or will not have. So, so the point I'm trying to make is that what works at some scale with certain parent community will not work at a different scale. When your parent community is like anybody and everybody, right? Because at that point in time, and, and again, sort of, you know, one one thing I'll share, and I've looked at at tech space, K-12 space, you know, in India, in US, outcomes start mattering very quickly in education, right? So, any context where you know you are not able to define outcomes very clearly and I, I understand your point on outcomes being you know the kid has learned you know is one outcome but fortunately and unfortunately parents do care about the the outcomes as defined by the formal system now it's fair to say that the formal system needs to evolve and change and you know one can critique sure. it to us, you know uh, yeah, evolve so right. this also leads into attaining those outcomes as well uh, as you know I'll just add to first film, number what you're saying. And, 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 and uh, one more thing, the school needs to worry less about what kind of parents and how many parents because one thing I've noticed is this kind of a program works with all students. So our focus has always, it has to remain on the students. Is it working with most of your students? I think if it works with 200 students, it will work with 2000 students also. We need to stop worrying about the parents too much and take a stronger Strong. I'll tell you one thing. Now, people aside searching the net about you know their ailments very often now. So my wife had the same problem. We used to go to a doctor for antibiotic level. Doctor like an antibiotic you know, side effects go hote. Isko to yehi isko fever nahi. Why you prescribing an antibiotic? Go note card samne rakha. Aap aap kar do. Trust me, you know I, I'm I'm the doctor. I know what I'm doing, and I'm I'm looking out for your child's best interest. So we as educators are also professionals. We also need to start drawing the line that we don't allow parents to cross. But we cannot be like it's a three pronged approach. We cannot exclude them in this. They don't exclude. Yeah, not excluding. You know, but exclude. there was one thought. I want to get back to Nita, ma'am, for a while, if you don't mind. Uh, well, as a you know, bigger school and bigger school, yourself also, Sunita, ma'am. Uh, 
your question was related to this thought was related to yeah this. i just wanted to say that whenever you are trying to do anything innovative in a school for all stakeholders whether it's parents teachers or students what i found is that it first populates too few students the early adopters mm. and these are the people who start giving you these uh, outcomes so uh, and then that inspires the rest Some of the people to, bearers of yeah sure. so then you have the next people coming in got it in terms of outcomes i don't know why we see this as a uh, difference between uh, learning to doing things on your own versus outcomes in exams so i have trained students who have gone and won medals for india in the international maths and chemistry olympiads and these are students who were genuinely interested in the subject yeah. the exams and all those things are a by product of them being truly passionate about learning that is what i found about them and these are people who are also equally interested in sports so they were not nerds who would not do anything else so uh, sometimes our idea of looking at stem and steam and this whole hands on part is we kind of divorce it from the actual curriculum it's not okay, every so subject that's a great segue because i just wanted to get back in we all started this topic based on your question on oh, you know we should or to comment that we should get away get out of the child's way right that part, a lot of the a lot of the you know kind of what did you bring to education is that and so how do you in your schools how what are you doing to foster curiosity a child's natural curiosity to get out of the way and to make this integrated within your curriculum i'll give you one small example and that's how all classes and you would understand when somebody who's taught in the ib and understand the ib essentially when you start a lesson any lesson any subject whatever you want start with a provocation so i wanted to do machines in my class simple machines in grade 3 i brought in some boxes and i let kept them in front of those grade 3 boys and girls and they had these screw drivers they opened it and then and i made some videos because i use it for my teachers training a lot and they started exploring and i started questioning them what is it that you see so i brought that maker space that tinkering space into their classroom in my lesson so what do you what is it that the ovc a lot of eyes we see this and then one of the boys said so it had little tiny capacitors these boys and girls don't know and boys said i said what do you think is this yellow bit so i think it's a power rater i said it's a power rater He says, "I think that you know when the current comes in, it kind of stores it. It's like a battery." I was blown away. So you see, children have that knowledge in them. They just don't know the right terminology. They don't know the right vocabulary to express it. What they're trying to say, he actually explained the whole concept of a capacitor, how the electricity comes, gets stored in it, and how it then gets distributed. But he explained it in a way, and he called it a power rater because the power gets stored in. So it's that about was the provocations about the challenge. It, it, it is it's so. That's what said. Yeah. It's all about inquiry. So that set the whole class's thought process to that level, and that's when you start from. So as a teacher, you've got to be very flexible with what you know where you want to go. What the two educators right. have been saying that that's my end goal. Right. How do you go? Needs to be navigated by the class and the learners who are with you. It cannot be that I'm the teacher and I know it all. They all move together. That's one little example I wanted to share. That. It helps. Yeah. I think Thank bringing you. something or the other interesting in your class every day. It should not be, uh, you know, particular class in a week, but every class. If you can bring something interesting, share something interesting, ask them something interesting. If they have read, if they have seen, if they have observed. The other day I was just taking, I teach physics, so I was taking the class. After a certain point, I thought maybe they are not that much interested. So out of box instead of. Doing physics, I just wrote something else. I said I've read something. I, I wrote it, and the word was dark tourism. So I had just read it somewhere. I just wanted to see if they know about it, and the discussion went on from an LCR circuit to dark tourism. And once we finished that thing, we came back to LCR circuit. They were more interested in it, and I was able to you know complete the chapter. So the point is, every day if you can bring in something, Olympics was another hit topic, you know, in my class. So every day we were discussing about something or the other, some sport or the other. Some day it was badminton, some day it was javelin throw. Some day it was a simple game, under grand throw. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I wanted them to see, watch Olympics, and bring something back to the class. So anything, if we can, you know. So it's hook, it's engagement, it's yeah, provocation, yeah. and once you have that, you know the child is leading. 
because it's their English curiosity. Learners, you know, a bunch of English uh, learners. Absolutely. I want to just, we have five, maybe five to seven minutes. I just wanted to get back into the, we talked about professional development. So it's like, okay, you're creating this atmosphere. We know you're to hook teachers, but you've got to do that at scale across your, all the teachers and professional development is important. What has worked for you? Those who have done this well, right? Or where it has worked for you well. What has worked for you in terms of uh, developing your teachers to have that mindset? See, one thing has really worked for me that I don't believe that high school teachers have separate professional, I mean, separate meetings, not professional, yeah. middle school yeah. differences. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. Should, they should exchange, yeah. and and you'll see how much even your little elementary teachers or nursery teachers will explain to the high school teachers. Mm -hmm. So that is when they have it within themselves, and that is a big learning. And so. And the thing is, I used to just throw the topic on the top of my hat and say, today this is to be discussed. Not their eating up, something and talking. And that becomes very interesting. Amongst themselves, there's a lot of learning can happen. You don't need to get a high-tech person. A lot of things happen amongst themselves. So mixed training, not bad. Yeah. And then I just just add interesting topics. I mean, something. Can we just add to something that she said? Something that worked really well. One of my school was going through the CIS accreditation and the requirement was that we have a curriculum alignment. So that needed that your K to 12 curriculum needed to be aligned. So we put our brains to it and we said, how do we do that? And because I was sharing that, we got all the maths teachers from the middle and senior school together in one room. And then in the primary, because there's no math teachers, they're homeroom teachers, they mm -hmm. teach all subjects. So we picked up teachers whose passion was in maths, right from nursery to grade five. Mm -hmm. And they all sat in that. And they sat together and said, and it was amazing for the math teacher in the middle senior school to know that how were numbers introduced, how did you actually introduce the concept. And they started looking at it saying, wow, we didn't know that. That was huge professional development for that level and for these teachers right. to say, what happens to our children when they, that's one example. So all subjects did that and it just worked out beautifully. Not even on a professional development. What I've done is I've opened up peer observations. I've had grade 12 yeah, math teachers look at kindergarten teaching mathematics. So in class like, observations. Yes, and yes, freeing up their time yes. so that they can go and see, oh my god, these kids know this at this age and they're asking these questions and they have a completely different understanding about how the kids are growing and developing at that age because they've always been stuck in their senior section with their yes. senior so training and that's yeah. all they hear Absolutely. and they don't realize the potential of the okay. learner. So we had a great conversation pre this meeting where we were talking about languages and we talked about programming languages and how even grade one could start to learn about yes. basic programming because you access those language skills at such a young age and you shouldn't be afraid to teach them sort of computer skills at that young age and learning those sort that of things. Should be done. It, it should be done but people don't do it because they think oh well that's something you do in high school or middle yeah. school. The language they introduce much later, the like, earlier they introduce language. Yeah, no matter what better. language it is, that's what I said about computer oh, yeah. languages. Sanjay, what have like what has worked for you? And to begin with all the programs apart, you need those disruptors. You need guys who have that special talent. You need those Mahindra Dhonis with long hair. What is the disruptor? So <laughs> I'm down telling you, no. you need that Mahindra Dhoni with long hair and off the shot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because you have a disruptor yeah. station. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Because you know, when you get those passionate guys into the system, they're able to you know, demonstrate that need. So while you might uh, do it, parachute it in, yeah. I mean, I call it the Gavichi program, mm. and I was keeping that for the last, because yeah. that's something that's worked beautifully for me. Gavichi program, yeah, what is it? And uh, usually you start, you know, uh, when you're teaching specialization to kids, they tend to just specialize their skills, I'm, I'm good at maths, I'm good at this, I'm good at that, and then you ask them what was Leonardo good at, for, so, for last what supper. Yeah. yeah. So everybody what says, he, what is he known for? And you look at people who have interest in those areas, come out with what was special about Leonardo in that aspect. So somebody related to art would say the Last Supper was a masterpiece. Here is somebody who's got a human figure with circles and triangles, and he recognizes that. There's somebody who says he, was the, he brought out the first design of a helicopter. Somebody says he brought about somebody who's good. Interested in defense forces says he created the first thought of an armored vehicle and a parachute, right? So kids are Da Vinci's. They don't know that they're mathematicians or they're 
sciences or there's a steam or a stem or something else like that they just go for what they have what we do is we stop them we put limits on and that's why two songs come to my mind always and i quote them and you see that is what the kid is on the other side of the table thinking there was a bruce springsteen song if you remember he says we learned more from a two minute record than what we did in school yeah. look where he's learning from right there and then of course being floyd saying we don't need no education <laughs> Because you see humans coming in one side, and you had salamis coming out. Yeah, but, but but you mentioned oh. sorry, you mentioned a very good point about the two-minute record. Yeah. This current generation Doesn't has a much know. lower attention span. Yeah. We yeah, need to stimulate them. We yeah. need yeah. to sort of like be innovative, as you said, bring in an object, talk no. about something. Yeah. Because exactly. the traditional way is going to die very much with this generation. The sort of Victorian yes. teaching model is. It needs to adapt, and, and these learners are going to force us to adapt. Yeah. 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 So, like you said, so when I every day stuff. Yeah. So yeah. when yes. I say, when you are talking about the problem of how do you convince the parent, this is how I do it. I said, you here is a man, research him, and you will know what I am trying to do with your kid. Very interesting. Just very very parents are a different animal. We are parents too. We we'll get uh, to that at, the, at, at a deeper <laughs> stage. I don't know. No, we because we think that you know, because teachers, how do you convince uh, a parent that you know, out of the curriculum, we have to Absolutely. do a STEM. Yeah. So here is the role model. Try and try and see. Yeah. So one last thought from you because I know I want to yeah, keep yeah, Ravi's yeah. time. Yeah. What works for you? So uh, I think we focus a lot on training and all, but one thing that which I also brought up earlier was giving agency to our teachers. So that has worked greatly for us, and we can only give somebody autonomy and agency if we ourselves have it. If you, as a school principal or director, don't have it from your management, I'm sorry, you cannot do it. Yeah. Right. First, fight it out with your management. Take it for yourself. Grant it to your teachers, who will then grant it to the right. students. Right. So, uh, as as a rule, what we try to do, uh, and we're in early stages, so we can afford to do this. We ensure that the teachers, half of the teachers' timetable in a week is empty. So that is to give them autonomy and agency of their time. If they have free time, they will think, they will come up with new ideas, they will want to work on different projects. And uh, teachers, when they join our school, they're delighted by it. I used to take 32 periods. I used to take 35 periods. Here I have 15 periods only. But then they realize working here is more challenging. <coughs> and you know, after three months, they're like, sir, bahut kaam hai, bahut kaam hai. but it's just 15 periods, my dear. So uh, then they come back, they say, no, but you know, there's so much planning, you have to think through, and there is STEM, and there is, you know, integrated learning, lesson planning, it's depth mein jati hai. So once we create that autonomy, your team will get more efficient, will get, will attain more of those outcomes, which are formally dictated, and sometimes they're unintended outcomes through programs like STEM, etc. So I think teacher training, of course, is very, very crucial and critical, and that support and handholding has to go throughout the year. It can't be a boot camp. It can't be a three-year workshop. So if you want to introduce something new, you have to at least look at it from one to two years lens. Like who's going to support my teachers for the first two years of this program? So uh, you have to develop that kind of a regimen for teacher training. But before you do that, create agency for your teachers and create agency for yourself so that you can take faster decisions. If my teacher comes to me and say, I want to teach balancing of courses and I want to have a board in class, it costs 12,000 rupees. Does my principal have the agency to say yes to that purchase? If she has to go through, you know, through the board, no, no, budget approved, no, 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 That culture is not there. So we need to reform the culture a bit. And with agency, with autonomy, will also come more trust, more integrity, because they will see that you trust them with what they do with their time at school. And we will start, you know, giving you more authentic and genuine feedback and report on whatever is happening around the school. So we also like did away with all reporting mechanisms. There is no filing of time sheets. Nothing. It's like I trust you, and I will observe my students to gauge whether you are doing a good job or not. I'm not going to ask you because you are incentivized to lie on those reports. See, all this I agree, and I wish someone one day we could all sit together and discuss how we can help these common schools. Anybody, there's a lot of that talk about it. It comes down to what the universities yes. do to prepare. And the energy we should do if you're mm -hmm. talking. Yeah. <laughs> what do we do in the village school? I mean, it's a long shot. Yeah. Then it will be introduced to the whole of it. I think we have, uh, ma'am, we have two hours for lunch. Yeah. <laughs> we, can, we can continue that conversation and yeah, you know, probe a little I bit think deeper. We should do something for them. So we'll get there. I think thank you for that thought. Yeah. Uh, Richard, do you want to, any, any comments to wrap no, up? No, I just, I don't know, I, it was super exciting to kind of hear all of these uh, very nuanced perspectives from everyone around so many different thematics of space, implementation, teachers, 
I think even like the development, how you're using your best practices to kind of build it. I think there's a lot to kind of unpack, and I think we need a next session to kind of do more because I think I still think that we are floating on the surface, and we've not put a structure to this conversation yet. So I, I'm excited to kind of like look into the next uh, maybe, one. Maybe that's what we do. Maybe we pick one topic between yeah. the five of us, and then we'll then we line it up for the, the next, next session. One, yeah. But anyway, we wanted to start the, the the discussion right now. or The brainstorm was where do we start? I think we all converged on starting with the child and about STEM and STEAM and STREAM are all about fueling the child's natural curiosity. Um, we talked about how do we do that. Uh, it's not about the space, it's about the mindset. We talked about provocation, hook, hook. it's about hooking the child, you know, through provocation, through challenge, through making every class interesting with every day, with stuff that is around us every day. We don't have to go out and get that. We talked about changing teachers' mindsets through PD, some practical suggestions there mixed uh, training, peer observations, role modeling, autonomy, and different signals of trust. So I think that kind of wraps up my summary for uh, for the day. I think it's a, it's, a, it's a good start. We can go deeper on any of the topics that we, you know, in informal conversation agree on, right? Thank you for investing your time in this session. You can pick a topic that you want to go deep, and even if you want to whiteboard and get down to in a smaller group execution, we can do that, ma'am. And if you want to talk about government schools and that, if that you know, if that's a topic that uh, resonates. Do do that Absolutely. Uh, like, how do we flow this? How do we flow this? Could be another topic. Right. I call ourselves. This is Cambridge and this is a top CBSE, this is top ICSE. What are we doing for that? And NEP is not going to come in so easily. Absolutely. If you're really going to say that that's what they want, it's. They're up there thinking. Just a broad day. So, so great yeah. start yeah. in your panel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So at at, uh, at three o'clock we're going to have hands-on science. I promise you, you will not look at the moon the same way ever again. Okay.